Hello there, and welcome back to episode 10 of Sandwalt's The Armored Heart. We are going to complete this part of the city today. We're going to continue building new apartments. And, well, the biggest challenge right now is to hold up with the influx of new people. The city grew way faster than I wanted it. But we're going to tackle it nevertheless. And all in all, the situation isn't going too bad. I was taking myself some time upstairs to redraw a couple of things here. So the stockpile zone for the blocks has wandered onto the uh, paved tiles. And I deconstructed the uh, trade depot. And we're reconstructing it right next to that. We still will need 700 pieces of claystone. And yeah, that's pretty much the quest for today. One more thing that I meant to do, though, before we get started with today's quest, was a new set of orders. So we're going to order ourselves a set of iron warhammers. And we're going to order ourselves a set of iron gear. So still no steel production because we don't have access to the uh, taverns yet. Not really, but I really want my people to be trained well enough before we get there. So I gauntlets and there is now the iron low boot. We ain't got no high boots. And the iron shields. So this is going to be the gear for another entire squad. And since I'm done with small amounts, we are going to amp that up all to this amount. This will be surely more material than we got right now, but it is what it is. So suit of iron spears as well and well let's see how far this will get us i'm pretty sure that neither the charcoal nor the iron bars will withstand the the amount of orders here but uh what do we have here mebzuth the doctor has snuck herself into a strange mood so that makes her protagonist number 18 or 19. Let's check her out. She can be very single-minded. She is often cheerful. She doesn't mind a little tumult and discord in a day-to-day -day living. She's a friendly individual and she tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects. She's not particularly interested in what others think of her, and she tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things. She tries to do things correctly each time. Mebzuth, you sound like such a uh, paragon of uh, dwarfs, uh, of, of dwarven kind. I already like her. So, well, I don't know if she's assigned already to the uh, hospital, but I want her to assigned to the hospital. So, can't take, keep track of this wonderful person here. So she's a surgeon and a bone doctor. We're putting her up to the diagnostician then. There we go. She can deepen her studies there. And I just figured that with all the things that are happening these days, it is time to go for one nice thing. And that is going to be a doctor skill hall. Come on. It's definitely what this fort needs. So, she created a shale amulet. Let's check that out. That made her a uh, legendary what? Stone cutter. Okay. Surely a very, very useful talent here. So I don't seem to have a storage for Gabro blocks yet. 
So what do we have here? It is decorated with goat bone. This object menaces with spikes of shale and iron. On the item is an image of a square brilliant cut gem in shale. On the item is an image of dwarves in iron. The dwarves are traveling. The artwork relates to the foundation of Sandwalds, the armored heart by the lone anvil of the Banner of Shadow in the early spring of 100. On the item is an image of round cabochons and cave spider silk. All right, so I really like this one, and well, I can't yet decide who will uh, wear it one day, but now let's do one other thing that I really find important. Why is there no storage for Gabbro blocks here yet? Hmm? Good, so, how about the remaining trees here? Not too many left. Well, we will need more claystone and we need more wood. The problem with wood is that my little desert patch here doesn't offer that much anymore. We uh, pretty much pilfered a lot of it already. So I'm a little bit torn in the question of what we're going to do. I foresee so much that we're going to blast our way into the caverns here with what we're doing. So we struck green jade. Sweet. So what kind of floor is available right now? Shale floor is available. Perfect. Just what I wanted. So we're going to put the Doctor's Guild Hall there. And... Well, I'm surprised that all of a sudden... We didn't have a single call for toy hammers yet today. While in the previous episode... We had a... Uh, a storm of mandates. Not that I want to jinx it, it's only seven and a half minutes yet, but, well. I'm pretty sure that we're going to see our toy hammer mandates too. So there's a lot of uh, rock salt also coming together here. I'm keeping an eye out on this excavation expedition here, as it is a little bit more dangerous, so... Toss it and toss it. What is it with you folks? Why are you doing this? I have to pick up toss it, of course. Jeez. I mean, if we have already racoust and racoust, we should definitely have toss it and toss it. Uh, didn't I say that I'd pick up people that stand out? <laughs> so do toss it and toss it stand out enough? Well... They definitely stand out enough for me to try and craft them a, uh, a iron pick. But it turns out we are short on refined coal. And storage stockpiles of uh, dogs, well, they do speak their own language. So the thing is, if I'd be starting cutting more trees here, the local fauna might go into berserk mode and uh, grow agitated on us. I mean, at the same time, we are dwarves, and what do we care about the uh, well-being of the feelings of the local animals? Not too much, but we need to, sadly. So, what are we going to do? I am going to open up the caverns, I think. I think this is really the best thing to do. So we're going to go for it, but in a controlled manner. So we're going to construct ourselves a little bit of a harder system here, which sole purpose would be to funnel any evildoers into the arms of my military in a in a in a way that allows us to react to the threat ahead in time. There we go. 
And we also will have two doors in here. Wait a sec. Ugh. Eh, now we're going to make these walls with outer mudstone. It ain't that important, in it? Ah, so... The toy hammer... Prohibition. The worst thing about my mayor is that she's obviously liking only this one very thing in her life. Toy hammers. The obsession. And don't get fooled by the uh, harmlessness of a uh, child's toy that is being ordered. Each one of these is basically a death threat as a mandate that is not getting fulfilled. It's a crime to dwarven kind. So whenever a mandate is being issued and it's not getting fulfilled, these people are criminals that receive a beating by the hammer. And this can often end up deadly. So, <laughs> toy hammers. <laughs> it ain't that much of a toy. It's a matter of life and death with this crazy woman. That's just the everyday life of a Dwarven Fortress. Don't get me wrong, I love this game for her, or the things it does here. It's uh, um, That's this emergent storytelling that runs free alongside of my gameplay. I adore this game for what it does there. So, this little thing here will take a moment, as it requires us to use mudstone. And uh, we used mudstone already to, to close the lid on our, on our fort. But uh, taking a little roam around in the sand walls, I gotta say, the city's looking really cool. I love what we did so far. So... Now we just need to get rid of the uh, shortage of beds and uh, timber in general. So we, we we ideally just slaughter some trees, I think. Right? It's the best thing that we can do. So there we go. I just wanted to give this... Uh, situation here, you know, the whole lid crafting part, a, a moment to simmer, as I feel like this will help us out a lot. So in the meantime, while we're letting this simmer, we're going to go downstairs here, and this is going to be the next big part of the city. So I want to go here for the finer arts. Here we're going to have, if everything works according to my plans, that is, we're going to have the workshops that decorate the finer goods. And we're also going to have our library here. So all in all, I want to make this the the epicenter of the culture of sad waltz, you know. But well, the biome shift here already nopes us out a bit, as we have again here, wet walls stopping our approach in this end. Well, it is not much of a big deal. So let's dig a tunnel into this direction and see where it'll lead. And we gotta issue some some death sentences to the local trees. So how's my woodcutters? I have literally just one? Not cool. Not cool at all. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> Anyways, so we should unassign the hut. My, my mayor is a hunter. Maybe I shouldn't turn it off. Maybe this might resolve things. You might stay a hunter. You know, everybody needs a hobby, I guess. Gordon, it's okay. But knowing my luck, she's going to survive any weirdnesses and just strangle any cyclops that comes her way and... Uh... <laughs> 
the usual things when you're trying to to get stuff like that done. Yeah, just like I expected, the damn rock wins again. So, seems like my entire road on this end is a uh, piece of wishful thinking. But I do love at the end of the day if it, uh, if it works like that. Because it always gives me the feeling that we, how to put it, that we're adapting to the current situation and we we have to build the city as, as we can. Not exactly only as we want to. And this is a really, really cool experience as I really realized the longer I played this game that a lot of hidden difficulty of the game lies in the various biomes and their uh, challenges. Although difficulty is maybe the wrong word, it's a misleading term for this game, as it is in itself quite easy to get this stable situation under, under your roof. A human mace man is uh, visiting us. But the... Uh, the real challenge of Dwarf Fortress is to find something that is fun and some sort of a challenge, as just staying alive is uh, relatively fast done. Look at that. We finished the uh, Doctor's Guild Hall and people are immediately socializing themselves themselves here hardcore there we go that's the power of guild halls it fulfills the socializing uh, need and it's it's a real powerhouse in terms of happiness so the forgotten beast engo has come a gigantic one-eyed stegosaurid it has large mandibles and it has a bloated body. Its pale blue scales are blocky and close set. Beware its noxious secretions. So, which layer are you spawning in, Engo? So, I think Engo is sadly on my height of the world. And that is the reason why we are not just blindly clobbering open any uh, caverns. Because if that thing would come into my fort, well, maybe my military would kill it. But maybe it'll kill my military and then there is nothing between this uh, nice little chap and the total annihilation of this outpost. But as matters stand right now, Ango is just taking a stroll around here. Swimming, running, swimming. Waiting for fools to breach open the caverns. It is needless to say that this monster is swimming around my little barracks here. So, yeah. Good thing that we didn't clobber it open mindlessly. Although, deadly spitter... Sp <laughs> Deadly spittle ancient beasts or forgotten beasts are among the most harmless ones as they their their attacks can be simply blocked by a shield and therefore they can be easily entirely negated which is a real big deal as some attacks like webs for example there uh, there is no saving through that I know of if uh, something spits a web at you and you're uh, unlucky enough to stand on the same grid as that web goes down, congratulations, you're webbed. End of the line. Congratulations, Ango now will come and bash your head in in one blow. Have fun. <laughs> that's, the, that's the real bummer about the uh, webbing mechanic. Anyways, I'm digressing. So we're building up this place, and let's see what happened here. It even grew worse. Not cool. So it turns out, I think we need to 
relocate our business a little bit. Give it a little bit of shift into one direction. Well, I was hoping that it'd be easier to craft out the uh, new area here. But on a bright side, we are generating a lot of mudstone for the for the lid. And our first fighters are growing into grandmasters. And there are starving animals. I am so, so sorry. So, once I have wrapped my head around the outer perimeter of the fort, I'm also going to go for a attempt to tame a little bit of the local wildlife. So we've captured already some ostrich and camel. Sadly, it's only one ostrich, so we'd be needing a little bit more than that. But we'll be getting there. As I assume that at the end of the day, these traps here might be still quite effective. So we're also going to do some some nasties here. I mean, cage cage traps are, in all regards, stupidly overpowered. They are so massively stupidly overpowered as they will literally just uh, stop so many things but up until dragons. A dragon just needs to step into a cage trap and uh, dragon be gone. Dragon in a box. <laughs> dragon on a trader's devil. <laughs> Whatever you want to do it with it. It's, uh, it's up to you then. And I find that a little bit uh, anticlimactic for such threats. I think it does work with Metal Colossi too, but don't take my word for that because I can't remember that I've done that myself yet, single time, so. I still have to do science, or the wise comment section wants to shed some light on things. I'll be putting up another stone workers workshop here. I kind of wonder whether or not we are going to reorganize this workshop area. No, I don't wonder whether or not. I wonder when. <laughs> and I just realized that we also should bring up a uh, irrigation now. It's about down time. Let's do this. So we're going to put up seven on seven hole here and here goes the same procedure as every year i i really like this uh blueprint for an irrigation as it is foolproof powerful and yeah all it takes are a few rock great uh, rock hatch covers. Let's make these Gabbro. So they'll be magma safe for sure. And then we are going to need some levers. And then upstairs stairwells. That should pretty much do the trick. Exactly. And then we put a hatch on top of it. Wait a sec. So do we do we really need to do this like that, huh? Nah, it didn't work. Whatever. So we're going to 
dig upstairs like this. But I think, yeah, the uh, grates will work also on this uh, side of town. Doesn't really matter. Oh, no. I ordered this place for wetness. All right. That's quite a fun ride here. We also found ourselves some gemstone, so don't mind me. So turns out no water on this side of the map. No. Not like this. This is, uh... This is sort of a tragedy. <laughs> As... Down here, we have water. So that means we'd be... We'd be needing to put up our farming biz over here. If that one a twirl. But this time I'll be smarter about it. First off, we're going to set up like that. An elven caravan has arrived. Oh, dang it. I don't know what to think about elven caravans. And then we're going to make something like that. So we're, uh, we're not going to buy anything. That's what we're going to tell these elves. No soliciting. So, this episode went peaceful and toy ham free. We are at 83 people. That means goblins will have, or, or, or no, goblins have the right to raid us. Which is, uh, in my humble opinion, outrageous. But uh, I, I wasn't asked to begin with. Now then, we can delete this uh, situation there. And add a an hatch onto this. Can also uh, deconstruct the switches. And start excavating the rest of the room. And let's just hope that this works out just like with the other area. And now let's order some rock hatch cover or two. Wonderful. So in these chambers, water will uh, be collected. Another rumor has been spread. Okay. There we go. That's what I wanted to have. And then, only a matter of connecting things and letting them take the time to fill the, the puddles, chambers, whatever. Let's just hope that nobody accidentally seals him or herself up there. Wouldn't be too surprised, though, if so. I mean, I got a, I got a mayor that uh, suddenly held her feet still quite uh, suspiciously. <laughs> I 
All right. So, is it leaking here already? That would be quite ironic. I mean, it, it, it also would be no matter whatsoever, as this uh, miniature drip here, I don't know, does it uproot stuff? If so, we're just going to put a floorboard on top of it and uh, call it a day up there. Speaking about calling it a day, we sadly have yet to find an end for today. Well, I really feel like we're getting somewhere. The city is feeling good. There's a lot of uh, storytelling happening and, uh, well, I hope we're going to have enough material soon to create ourselves enough gear, train up real good soldiers to mess around with forgotten beasts because I don't want to hide myself forever here in the caverns. Or from the caverns, I should rather say. Anyways, I'm going to prepare some city in between the episodes. I thank you all for being around. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And check out the description box. There's plenty of stuff go, go around there. You'll find my Discord. You'll find my Twitch, where I stream on Fridays and Sundays in the evening hours of the middle european time zone and check out my youtube channel membership thingy and patreon paypal and buy me a coffee so the channel membership allows you to watch videos a little bit earlier than other people so if you're into that you're just just gonna hit that thing and that's that either way a big thanks to all of you supporters of the channel out there Thanks for believing into this channel. Thanks for helping me to make all this. And of course, a big, big thanks to you watching this video. Because that's exactly what I'm talking about. So I hope you had a good time. And see you all on the next one. When I'll be wrapping my head around how we're going to make the Artisan's Quarter look nice. And make it uh, somehow useful. And uh, I'm still struggling at the question how we're going to achieve both at the same time. Anyways, have a good one. See you soon. Bye-bye. More people. Oh, gosh. <laughs>